on to the big Snoopgate showdown now. Uh, amidst a massive Snoopgate face-off in the parliament, you've got uh, an equally big reported U-turn coming in by the Amnesty International. The civil rights body has said that it never claimed an NSO Pegasus list of people uh, who were spied on. It claims the list is only indicative and contains names of the people who who are the clients of NSO who would like to spy on and not the real names. Amnesty instead has blamed the global media companies for the confusion. Amnesty is one of the proponents of the so-called global investigation, which is said to have revealed a list of high-profile individuals allegedly snared through Israeli Pegasus spyware. The BJP has now claimed vindication, saying that no one knows where did the snooping list come from. No one knows whether the phones were hacked. Meanwhile, IT panel chairman Shashi Tarur has said that their committee has enough power and there is no need for a JPC probe. A PIL has been filed in the Supreme Court seeking a court monitor probe for the moment. The fact is that Amnesty's revelation is not new. Earlier also when you had um, a similar thing do the rounds, there was no clarity around it even then. And it continues to be so even now. It's just a fishing expedition to undermine democracy, to undermine elected government. And the fact that it emerged just a day before the monsoon session of the parliament should tell you that it was intended to disrupt parliamentary proceedings. And of course, sections of the media and the opposition has taken it uh, completely on themselves to do what was expected of them. There used to be a directory system. BSNL used to have its own directory. There are so many other directories, Yellow Pages also. And from Yellow Pages to Yellow Journalism is what we have seen in this entire story. Some list is crafted, created, circulated, and the story goes around a fake list. The way mythical character like Darth Vader or Voldemort are created in Harry Potter, similar conduct is being indulged in by the opposition in the parliament. We have been calling for a judicial inquiry, an independent judicial inquiry. I think an independent judicial inquiry, either appointed by the Supreme Court or by under the Commissions of Inquiry Act, something like that is bound to be able to get to the truth, which is what the Indian people need to know. The judicial inquiry is not our name. This is Deep of the iceberg, which is the heat of the day. When the day is the day, the day is the day. 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 This is illegitimate, illegal, uh, uh, and uh, uh, with all uh, the negative aspects uh, in the society, uh, is being adopted to form this government. So it, this government has got no moral right to continue and they should step down. And uh, if uh, if they would not have attempted uh, through the Snoop Gate, I think the uh, government would have been stable. <laughs> to get a better understanding of the controversy, we ended up speaking to Israel-based cyber tech investigative journalist Omar Kabir. Listen into what he had to say. How do you look at a list now being called indicative, which global media has taken on face value that these were the names already spied upon? Uh, well, it's very interesting because Amnesty has, has actually never uh, changed its statement from the start. What they know is clarifying what they've been saying from the moment the story first came out there and the, the journalist consortium forbidden stories. And they are all been saying this is not a list of NSO's target. This is a list of phone numbers that have been of some interest, maybe legitimate, maybe illegitimate, to governments that are clients of NSO. Uh, the problem is that this statement got lost in the way when other media reported about the story, and some of them, a lot of them actually made the jump and claim, well, every number on this list is a number that's been targeted by NSO. This is not the case, and NMST is just clarifying it right now. That and in fact they've never said they never said it and they just want to clarify it right now. So how should this list now be seen? Because it's become a global storm here in India, it's become a major showdown, Omar, in the parliament. So should it be seen only as an indicative now that these names were not spied upon, none of them, or perhaps some may have been, as some journalists are also stating. Some may have been, some may have been, yes. 
uh, I'm guessing most of them have been not. There is no way to tell. This is just a list of numbers that have been in, in, of interest, probably to governments that are clients of NSO. They are not indicative of anything behind, behind be, uh, in addition to that. What we can say is that another part of the story uh, that this is based on a forensic analysis that has been done to 67 phone numbers, 67 num phones, devices that have been headed to Amnesty. Uh, on 37 of them, there have been found evidence, some evidence of Pegasus software that has been installed. Uh, this is, we can say with more certainty, there have been found 37 uh, phones in this research of Pegasus uh, on these phones. Uh, the list, I, I don't think you can say anything with certain about the list. Certainly you can't say that a number on the list equals a number being tracked 